Hello, my name is Andrew and I am a systems engineer with Analytical Graphics. And today we're going to be showing you a quick demo on how you can gather external terrain and imagery from the USGS site to import into SDK for both visual and analytical purposes. So let's go ahead and get started. We're going to begin by opening our favorite web browser and by navigating to viewer.nationalmap.gov forward slash basic. Now, once we get to this site, we're going to have a few different choices. We'll notice on the left hand side, we can see our different data selections. And then on the right hand side, we're going to see a map. What we're going to do is underneath the data field, we're going to go ahead and enable the elevation products parentheses three dep. So this is going to give us some different terrain data. Once we make that selection, we can actually go ahead and choose the resolution for the data that we're going to be looking at today. I'm just going to leave it at one third arc second DEM but we can also increase the fidelity by selecting a uh, higher resolution, say as one arc second if we wanted. The next thing that we're gonna do is come into our map and actually go ahead and select an area of interest. Within the map, we're gonna select this square looking icon and this is gonna be a drawer tool to allow us to go ahead and pick an area of interest. So I'm from Colorado, I'm based out of Colorado, so I'm gonna go ahead and select the Colorado region as my area of interest. Once I've done so, I'm going to go ahead and start to filter my data. So I'm going to return to this left hand side next to data sets, and then I'm going to select find products. Now this may take a moment to go ahead and start to search through all the data, depending on how big of a map that you've drawn. Some other things to note here as well within the USGS site, you're primarily going to see either .dem or .geotiff data. Uh, within STK, you can actually import a variety of different types, whether it is DM, uh, geotiff, or also DTEDs, just to name a few. Great, so now that we've gone ahead and started to search our data, we wanna go ahead and show the footprints to make sure that we're making the right selection. So underneath product, if we select show footprints, this is actually going to show us an outline of where all these different terrain tiles are located on the map. So you can go ahead and notice this here. Now for this demo today, I'm gonna to just go ahead and select the area encompassing Boulder, Colorado. I'm a University of Colorado alumni, SCO Buffs, so we're gonna make this our area of interest. When I make a selection within this tile, you'll notice that my product gets automatically selected not only here in this window, but then also on the left-hand side as well. So what I'm gonna to wanna to do is go ahead and verify this data is in fact terrain and not just imagery. So I'm gonna look at the name, see when it was published. I'm gonna see that this format is a geotiff, which means that this is a terrain file that I can go ahead and use today. The next thing that I'm gonna to wanna to do is go ahead and enter into its info slash metadata. So this is gonna give me uh, more details about this different terrain tile, where it was found, a summary of it, and then of course a publication date as well. What I'm gonna to wanna to do is go ahead and download not only the imagery, but also the terrain. So if I scroll down to this section of related external resources, I'm going to select on the type download TIFF. So this is going to actually be my terrain file. So I'm going to make, I'm going to select on this to down, begin the download. And then much like that, I'm going to go ahead and also download the JPEG or the imagery as well within this type browse image. It'll likely open up a new window. So what I'm gonna do is right click on this train and go ahead and select save image as, and then I'm just gonna download it to my desktop today to make this easier. The last thing to note as well, returning back to the tab we were just at before, we wanna make sure that we actually can go ahead and jot down the latitude and longitude values of these terrain tiles, just in case along the way that info doesn't get stored in the metadata itself. So back within this terrain tile details view, we're going to select this map icon and you'll notice underneath the map, we'll see this bounding box, and this is gonna give us our latitude and longitude values. It's just best practice to go ahead and look at these and go ahead and jot them down for later use if need be. All right, so we've downloaded our train and imagery. The next thing to do is to go ahead and open up SDK and start to import those within. So I'm gonna go ahead and open up my SDK. I'm just gonna select my desktop version. And then for this scenario, I'm just gonna go ahead and accept many of the defaults once SDK opens. I don't really care too much about my start or stop time. So within my welcome to SDK, I'm gonna go create a scenario. I'm gonna name this terrain converter for the day. And then I'm just gonna leave that start and stop time as well. Now, once SDK goes ahead and opens, 
What we're going to do is optimize our workspace. So we're going to maximize our 2D graphics and 3D graphic windows. And then we're going to go ahead and import in that terrain. So once we're prompted with this insert SDK objects, we can go and close out of that. We're not going to be too concerned about that today. We're going to come up to window. And then we're going to select window tile vertically. And this will go ahead and maximize that 2D and 3D graphics window space. Next, we're going to go ahead and save our scenario. Following along with best practices, we always want to make sure that we save and we save often. I'm just going to go ahead and accept the default since I know that this is in my desktop. And once my scenario is saved, I'm going to go ahead and open up my scenario properties by double clicking on my scenario. Next, I'm going to navigate to the basic terrain page. So again, basic terrain. The first thing I'm going to want to do is go ahead and turn off my terrain server since I'm going to be using my own custom terrain for the day. So underneath this terrain server field, I'll go ahead and disable this use terrain server for analysis, select apply. And then now I'm going to add in that terrain that we actually downloaded off the USGS site. So underneath the custom analysis terrain sources, I'm going to select the add button next to it. And then I'm going to navigate to my downloads where I actually had downloaded that TIFF file. Now, one thing to note is that right off the bat, I don't actually see my downloaded TIFF file. And this is because this files of type hasn't defaulted to that value. So what I can do is select the carrot next to my files of type and go ahead and select the terrain file type that it is. So this is going to be that tagged image file format dot TIFF. Voila, we'll notice that it appears right off the bat. So I'm going to go ahead and select my N41 West 105 and select open. Now, once I've done so, I can go ahead and select OK. We're good within our scenario level properties. The next thing that we're going to do is open up the train and imagery converter. So we're going to come up to the top toolbar, select utilities, and then select the imagery and terrain converter. So again, utilities, imagery and terrain converter. Now within the imagery and terrain converter, we can actually do image to image conversion. We can do terrain to terrain conversion, and then we can also mesh these things together as well. So we're going to stick on this single image page. And the first thing that we're going to do is select our imagery data. So under input data, the ellipsis button next to image file name, we will select that and then go ahead and choose that imagery file that we gathered off USGS. For me, it's saved to my desktop. So I'm going to navigate to my desktop and go ahead and select that. The next thing that we're going to do is go ahead and select the terrain source that we're going to be using with this as well. So I'm going to enable this use next to train. And then what I'm going to do is select this caret drop down next to the automatic selection and go ahead and choose that terrain file that we had added in before that dot tiff. Now, one thing to notice right off the bat, my image extents haven't actually pre-populated. So this is one little step that we need to do. We'll go ahead and copy and paste these image extents from our terrain into our image field. So we can just do a quick control C, control V to copy and paste these down. And once we have finished doing so, the next thing that we're going to want to do is go ahead and select what our output data is going to look like. So we are going to generate an image file, a JP2 or JPEG 2000. So this is going to be the imagery that is actually going to be associated uh, with our terrain. We can go ahead and modify the directory to be our scenario folder. So I'm going to select the ellipsis button next to my directory under output data. And go ahead and select the folder of our scenario. So this was terrain converter for me today. Select OK. And then the last thing I'm going to do is just go ahead and name this jot JP2. Instead of being this USGS name that's not really useful to me, I'm just going to name this Boulder. And then we'll notice here as well as a terrain file also gets outputted as well. So we're going to say use the same output image data, including the name, and then we're going to generate that .pdtt. Great. So once we do so, we can go ahead and select convert. Now, the conversion may take a little bit of time depending on how high of a resolution of terrain that you are converting. So just sit back and wait a moment while this goes ahead and finishes. OK, great. Once our conversion has finished, we can go and close out of this imagery and terrain converter by selecting close. And then we're going to go ahead and add in this terrain and imagery. 
So in our 3D graphics window, what we're going to do is select this globe manager icon. It looks like an earth with a little folder, and that's going to launch our globe manager. Within our globe manager, we're going to go ahead and make sure that we add both that imagery and that terrain file that we've created. So we will select this little plus icon, add terrain and imagery, and then select this add terrain imagery button and set it time. Now once we make that selection, we're going to be prompted for where to look. So I'm going to change the director to my scenario folder. So I'm going to select this ellipsis button next to my path. And then I'm going to go ahead and select my scenario level folder. So that's going to be that terrain converter and select OK. Now you'll notice in here we have two different files that pop up, that .jp2 and then that .pdtt. So that's going to be the image and terrain file, respectively. So I'm going to enable both of these check marks to make sure I add them both in and select add. Now for my PDTT, I'm going to be prompted, would I like to add this for analysis? I'm going to select yes. Great. So the next thing that we're going to do is just go ahead and add in a boulder place object to make sure that I have in fact added my terrain correctly. So I'm going to select this insert SDK objects icon up here. And then on my left hand side underneath scenario properties, I'm going to select place and then by select a method, I'm going to select from city database and then select insert. Once this pops up in the name field, I'm going to type in Boulder and then select search. Notice a few different boulders pop up. I'm going to want the one that says Boulder, Colorado. So select Boulder, Colorado, select insert, and then select close. And then close out of my insert SDK objects window as well. So we've added in our terrain, our imagery, and then we've also added in that place object as well. So we will right click on Boulder, go to zoom to. And let's go ahead and view what Boulder, Colorado looks like after adding this terrain. Great. So you'll notice right here, in my 3D graphics window, you can actually see this imagery file that I added. Now this is look a little bit different than what comes standard with SDK. So this is going to be what was off that USGS site. It's in black and white, kind of showing more or less just in elevation contours. Now this might not be super useful for my analysis. So instead, one thing that I might do is just go ahead and disable this. So within my globe manager, I can just come to my boulder.jp2 and I can disable this and then get back to that imagery that comes native with SDK. So looking a little bit prettier there. Alrighty, if I pan around, I can see that I have in fact added my terrain. And if I zoom out, I can very clearly and distinctively see that terrain tile. Alrighty, so that is everything that you need to know on gathering terrain and imagery data off of the USGS site importing it into SDK such that you can visualize and do some analysis with it. Thank you very much.